Here are the starters. Number one, Heather Paul, owned by Neva Jane Gravengood and Terry King of Paw Paw, trained by Terry King, and she is the driver. Number two, LD's Legend, owned by Janet Emerson and Bernard Clausen, trained by Harley Emerson with Connell Willis in the bike. Number three is Fox Valley Jazz, owned by the Silberbergs, by Jim Eaton and by Tiernan, trained by Jim Eaton. Tony Morgan is up. Number four, Playsack, owned by Dick Baylog of St. Charles, trained by John Bootenshane, the driver, Jim Curran. Number five, Yankee Pardner, owned by Paul and Sue Phillips of Charleston, trained and driven by Paul Phillips. Number six, Old Keith, owned and trained by Jerry Graham of Salem, the driver, Andy Miller. Number seven, Never Willie, owned by Mystical Marker Farm and by Jack and Peggy Hood, trained by Ron Van der Rostein, Dave McGee in the bike. Number eight is Holly Hill High, owned by Gary Williams of Milan, Illinois, trained by Guy Calvert, Chad Swenson is up. And number nine, Rocky Fedora, owned, trained, and driven by Red Clark of Granite City, Illinois. Again, a reminder, both number one, Heather Paul, and number six, Old Keith, wear trotting hobbles for the second straight time. And post time is six minutes away. Here they come. Holly Hill High off stride, and so is Playsack, and so is Old Keith. The rest are off and trotting. Never Willie goes out for the lead. Heather Paul is there toward the inside as the field goes into the first turn, and Never Willie has made a break on the far outside. Now LD's legend is off stride. In fact, two-year-old trotters are scattered trying to regain their momentum behind the leaders. Now Fox Valley Jazz has made a break. And after all of those problems, it is Heather Paul who leads Rocky Fedora and Yankee Partner by just over a length as they trot on by the quarter mile mark. Never Willie has gotten settled down to trot fourth after a break. The first quarter went in 30 and four fifths. Heather Paul, the leader a half length. Rocky Fedora second by four. Yankee Partner is unhurried in third. 15 more lengths to play sack fourth. Then Fox Valley Jazz. Never Willie made another break. He is followed by Old Keith, who has plenty of ground to make up, and Holly Hill High and LD's Legend are at the back of the field. At the half, Rocky Fedora trots on the lead by two and a half lengths, the half in a minute, three-fifths. Heather Paul is second for Terry King, then a gap of six more to Yankee Pardner, 15 more back to play sack followed by Never Willie, moving up around Fox Valley Jazz, who's rough-gated again. Then it is Old Keith, followed by Holly Hill High and LD's Legend. And on the far turn, Heather Paul is chasing down Rocky Fedora. They're at the three-quarter, and here comes Heather Paul, but he's off stride. Heather Paul made a break while going for the lead. Now Yankee Partner looms a threat, and he has caught Rocky Fedora, three quarters, 133 and one. Here comes the veteran trotting horse man, Paul Phillips, on the outside with Yankee Partner and another veteran campaigner, Red Clark, on the inside. Puts the whip to Rocky Fedora. Dave McGee coming along with Jim Curran with Playsack and Never Willie on the far outside. Playsack trotting strongly. Curran begging that trotter to get there. Yankee Partner has him by a half length. It is Playsack coming quickly. Playsack gets up. By a length and a half, Yankee Pardoner was home second, and never will he finish third. The time for the mile, 2.06 flat. The winning trotter went a monster mile. He made a break at the start, recovered, and then circled the field down the stretch to win it. And no wonder he went a big trip. As someone pointed out down trackside, they said, please correct your pronunciation. He's named, obviously, for the baseball man, Mr. Plezak. And that's why he's a champion here today, folks. Number four, Plezak and Jim Curran with the winning drive. What a performance by this Armbro Charger Colt, owned by Dick Baylog of St. Charles, trained by John Bootenshane and Jim Curran native of Michigan before he took his tack to Chicago many years ago. Curran comes home with the winning mount here in the eighth race. The result is still unofficial, 4-5-7. Plezak making only his second lifetime start for money. 
and that is a trend we have seen this afternoon in the trots. A lot of these green horses out of Chicago have come ready to play ball today. And Plezak is just the latest as he busts off a mile in 2.06 for the victory. Jim Curran with the winning drive. And uh, let's go down and let's see if we can talk to the winning connections with Ed Teefee. Ed, who you got? Yeah, Kurt, Pete Barony here with me in the winner's circle, Rich, uh, representing the owner of this uh, fine colt, Richard Baylog. Dick Baylog, an attorney from St. Charles, Illinois, of course, a former member of the Illinois Racing Board. And Pete, this is a fine colt named after a good uh, friend of yours and a good friend of Dick Baylog's. Yes, uh, Dan Fleesack, former pitcher with the Cubs, now with the uh, World Series bound uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, who just beat the Cubs the other day. Uh, Richard named this horse after him, oh, I guess a year and a half ago. Well, I'm sure Dick's going to be happy. And uh, please, Zach, it looks like he'll be one of the uh, one of the favorites in the final next week. Very green, just one start for the money, as Kurt, uh, Kurt pointed out. Tell us a little bit about the training regimen for this horse. Was he uh, ready late, have some ailments, or what was the deal there, Pete? Well, according to Richard, this horse showed nothing but speed all along, but he just didn't mind his manners. He couldn't keep his brain on what he was supposed to be doing.